Hello and welcome to the Snap Revise channel. I'm Amy and for this video I'm going to go over four resources that you need to be using if you want to get an A star in your A level science. When you start year 12, your A level learning can seem quite overwhelming. It is a big step up from GCSE with a lot of the concepts that you covered at secondary school going into much more detail and with new skills being introduced. Scientific subjects especially become a lot more intensive, but luckily there are loads of resources out there to help you beyond your lessons to understand what you need to do to nail your exams. In this video, I'll talk about four resources that you need to start using in your revision. They are easy to access and will make your revision much, much more effective. I do recommend that you use the resources in this video. Your A-level exams aren't designed to catch you out. Your exam board really does want you to do well and they provided you with the information to do just that. I'll be talking about your specification, the practical handbook, examiner mark schemes and examiner reports. You can download all of these online from your exam board website and then use this video to understand exactly how you should use them. So first up is your A-level specification and this is the hub of your learning. Everything you need to know about your subject is in here as well as the skills that you'll develop and where you can apply them as well as opportunities for further research beyond the specification content. The spec is what your teacher uses to make their lesson plans and it's what you should be using as a framework for your revision. It literally contains everything that you need to know from your mathematical requirements to your practical assessments, what the general objective of the course is and what you should be gaining from it. So within your specification you should find links to the exam board website which provides you with even more resources from practical setups so they can provide you with images of how to set up your practical equipment and this is very useful for your practical assessments as well as booklets that go over what the transition is like from GCSE to A level and how you can prepare. If you are particularly nervous about exams then you should have a look through all of these resources because it provides you with loads and loads and loads of help that you can use to prepare for mock exams or for the final exam. For example, I found this link to exam command words and it tells you what they all are and what they mean and how to form a response that will gain you all the marks that you can get for that question. You can also access past papers, mark schemes and examiner's reports all from this link within your specification. So download your specification and then print it off and if I were you, I would take it to all of your lessons so that you can tick off what you covered in that lesson and also make notes on things that you found particularly tricky or want to go over again. I did this for my A-levels and I found it was very useful when I came to sitting down to revise because I didn't waste time thinking of things that I needed to cover. I'd actually made a list of stuff that I wanted to go over in that day. So a section of your specification that you need to pay particular attention to is where it says students should be able to. This is typically in bold at the bottom of one of the content boxes. This section is useful because it gives you an idea of what you may need to do with the information you've learned in your specification and the level of detail that exam questions might want you to go into. Do bear in mind that although these skills are highlighted within certain topics, the skills that they're asking you to apply could come up across any part of the specification. So make sure that you identify the skill in detail and are then able to apply that anywhere within your subject knowledge. In the content part of the specification, you'll notice that there are two columns. One contains information about the subject that you need to know and the other is talking about opportunities for skills development. MS notation refers to mathematical skills, AT refers to apparatus techniques and PS refers to practical skills. It could be worthwhile you going through your specification and compiling all of these skills into one list so that you have a comprehensive place to go to for your revision. If you've never looked at a specification before, then honestly, all I can recommend is that you just read through it, digest all the information within it, and make sure that you understand everything that you'll be asked to do in the exam. So once you have the specification showed up in your mind, the next thing that you want to look at is the practical handbook. Again, this can be downloaded from your exam board website and is essentially just a specification for your practicals. For too long in my A-levels, I assumed that the practical handbook was what teachers used to make their lesson plans, but once I started using it, I really did notice the benefit when it came to practical questions in the exam. So the practical handbook talks about where you will be assessed in lessons and then where practical questions could pop up in the exam. With AQA A-Level Science being 15% practical assessment, this is a resource that you definitely should be using in your revision. Practical marks are usually very easy to attain in the exam if you know what you're talking about, so it should be a part of your revision as any other part of the subject is. One thing that I really like about the AQA A-Level Practical Handbook is that it gives an analysis of parts 
past practical exam questions, giving you an idea of how to respond and exactly where the information is within the question to use to form your response. If you find that you often get confused by practical questions, then hopefully the practical handbook will change that for you. In your science lessons, you do practicals that form part of your assessment and you aren't actually required by the exam board to take notes on the methodology or anything else around these practicals. I recommend and the practical handbook recommends that you actually keep a lab book. So your school might provide you with one, but if not, you can just take a plain notebook into your practical lessons and take notes on the whole process as you go through. The handbook gives you details on how you should actually be taking notes within your practical lessons to make the most of them and the competencies for each practical that you will be assessed on. Once again, all I can recommend in terms of your practical handbook, if you haven't looked at one before, is that you download it and just read through it and make sure that you understand where all of the vital information is in there. It's designed to help you, so make sure that you are using it in your revision. The next resource I want to talk about is mark schemes and particularly mark schemes when they are used in conjunction with past papers. Now you should be doing loads and loads of past paper questions in your revision because that's active recall and it's the most effective way of solidifying that information in your mind. The mark scheme itself however gives you an insight into the marking process and allows you to understand what the examiner is looking for specifically when it comes to different styles of question. Use the mark scheme to gain a broad familiarity with what your exam board wants from you but one thing I will say is don't rely on on historical answers around a topic being suitable for future questions. This is something that the mark scheme um, actually has put in as a bit of a disclaimer saying that the exam board could change details in the future about how they want certain topics to be answered. What you need to do with your mark scheme is identify general patterns. So looking at different command words, different question styles, and then how they form the marks in response to those questions. Through doing loads and loads and loads of past papers and going through loads and loads and loads and loads of mark schemes, you will feel a lot more confident when you sit down and have a look at all of your exam questions because they are pretty much all presented in a very similar format from year to year, just with different topics in each question. This final resource that I'm going to recommend goes very well with the mark scheme and that is the examiner's report. I think this is probably the best kept secret in A-level revision. This document is a literal gold mine of A-level exam information. It's essentially a compilation of all the feedback from examiners in terms of what students did well in in their exam and where they consistently failed. Fortunately, the examiner's report is very easy to read. The question is highlighted in bold and then the statements about this question are just underneath. Very user-friendly, very easy to read through and is so, so helpful if you seem to consistently lose marks and not understand why. OCR have also introduced a feature which clearly sets out the difference between the more successful exam candidates and the less successful exam candidates in how they approached responding to exam questions. Even if you aren't doing doing OCR, I would recommend that you have a look at this bit within their examiner's reports because it gives you a general idea of what you need to be working towards if you want the higher grades. It would be a good idea for you to have a look at the examiner's reports from last year's exams closer to your exams in the summer. It's possible that areas that students didn't do so well in last year could come up again this year. Think of the examiner's report as a more informative mark scheme. Not only does it give some context to the mark scheme, but it gives you an idea of why you lost marks that you perhaps think you should have got. Definitely use examiner's reports in conjunction with past papers and mark schemes so that you feel very prepared walking into your exam and know that you know exactly what the examiner is looking for so that you can get that A star grade. So those are all four of the resources. Thank you so much for watching and please do let us know in the comments if you are already using these or if you have any other tips for other students to use in their revision. Don't forget to give us a like if you found this useful. We have teaching videos, weekly live streamed web classes and even more advice videos just like this one. We are also on social media. We are on TikTok and Instagram at Snap Revise, posting daily some bite-sized information to complement your course learning and help make revision a little bit easier. Subscribe to the Snap Revise channel just here and if you're new and don't know much about us then this video here should give you all of the information that you need to know. Thanks again and good luck with your revision. Hopefully see you again next week on the Snap Revise YouTube channel.